Hello everyone, this is Body Binks and welcome back to Let's Play The Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, where we are continuing on in the fifth case of the game, The Adventure of the Unspeakable Story. And we are in the fourth, fourth part of the trial, and I'm really, 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 <laughs> I know I'm going to say this every episode now, I'm really hoping that we're almost done. It would be really great to just wrap this whole thing up right now. Although I think where we last left off, um, we might be in trouble. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to get out of this one. Hmm. It was the accused who shot the victim in this case. That is the whole truth. <sighs> ah, crap. Come on. My lord, who's saying this? Oh, no. <laughs> get up. No! <laughs> ah, shite. Are we gonna have to do another jury summation thing? Come on. Been a long battle, this one. But this old war horse has something to say now, if you please. Mr. Foreman. As of this moment, sir, the squadron has reached its final decision. Ready, men? All for one now. Here we go. Sir! Guilty. 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 Yikes. Guilty. Yikes. Guilty. Oof. Guilty. Yikes. Forever. Yo. Yo. How are we gonna get out of this? <laughs> Well, it would appear the ladies and gentlemen of the jury have reached a unanimous verdict. The defense has consistently failed to unpick this witness's testimony. Here's to any attempt you may make at unpicking the jurors' decisions being equally successful. Okay, you said that really weirdly, but I think I know what you meant to say, so, okay. Uh, uh, I don't believe it. After I've come so far, this freaking case has just been going on for so long. How is it all unraveling on me so fast? Yikes. GG. Okay, who is this? Somebody at the last minute has to come help us. So, I have one person that I'm hoping it is. Is it Sherlock? Is he friendly out of the hospital? I mean, this case pertains to him in a big way, and yet he's barely been present. So, if it's not him, then I don't know. How very distressing. Who is it? Yes, yes, it has to be him. <laughs> He's insulted about everything that uh, Van Ziegs was saying about him. How very distressing to be held in such low esteem. Sherlock, you're back. Oh. Oh. He's he's un in disguise, of course he is. Which, Sherlock, uh, I don't know how many people... Like, if, if you're not too knowledgeable about Sherlock, he he is called, like, not a master of disguise, but he's he's really good at it. And he likes to do it. He has fun doing it. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Norihoto? Officer? You've delivered the report now. That will be all, thank you. It occurs to me with some regularity, Mr. Norihoto. That scientific truths are determined not by science, but by none other than the human mind. I... I know that voice. Must pull myself together. <laughs> Am I going mad? Ah! Yep. Now his hair is suddenly noticeable. <laughs> Mr. Holmes! Oh, you had to do your dramatic pose. <laughs> I 
I just love how they were standing right next to him and they couldn't recognize him until right now when he wants us to recognize him. <laughs> what, what is the meaning of this in this that that pose? <laughs> Graydon's over there like, who the hell do you think you are doing dramatic poses? Only I can do that. And Sherlock is like, step off, man. I did it first. <laughs> Oh no, oh no! I believe I said at like one of maybe 15, 20 episodes ago, I think I was like, oh man, what would we to do if we had all three of the most dramatic kings in a room? Like, like who's the most dramatic? Is it Von Zeke's, Graydon, or Sherlock? And now all three of them are right here! <laughs> The world's gonna end, you guys. I don't know if we can handle that much drama, that much extra, extra read all about it. I'm actually kind of excited for that. Yes, yes, give it to me. I've been, I've been dying for this case to end, but I'm happy to see him. He has little by little wormed his way into my heart. So, even though he's not my traditional Sherlock, I'll, I'll accept him. He's funny. He's, he's funny in his own way. <laughs> order, order, order! <laughs> See? <laughs> ben Zeke's is salty. He's like, no! How dare you! Come and take my spotlight! <laughs> uh, I, I kind of was like... Like, I think I said it before, too. I was kind of hoping that secretly, kind of like with Edgeworth, that Edgeworth was a secret fanboy of the whole Still Samurai thing. I was hoping that Van Zeeks would be a secret Sherlock Holmes fan. I think that would have been really funny. What business do you have here, detective? The last I heard, you were recuperating in hospital. As well I would be, had I not been set upon an errand. What errand? Shirley! It's really you! You're awake at last. Oh, Iris was worried. Yes, good day, Iris. I appear to be rather late to rise. My apologies. No, my lord. If you will humor me. In what manner, sir? I have something of great importance I wish to give to the young lawyer over there. I need no more than five minutes. Would you be so kind as to spare us the time? Uh, what say you to this, Lord Von Zeeks? His trial has taken many hours of the court's time, having spent so long already. Exactly, having spent so long already, we don't want to go wasting any more precious time. I know you don't like Sherlock, but shut up, man. As I was saying, having spent so long already, it would seem churlish to deny the defense a mere five minutes. Hmm. Hmm. Is he helping us? Or is he secretly a fanboy like I thought? And he's like, oh, I want to have Sherlock here right across from me just for five minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Please. Please let me be right about this. I would be so happy. Like, oh, I want to see fan art or something of Van Zeke's like making hoo goo eyes at him. Like, oh, my idol. Just like uh, Jur number five was doing towards Benedict. I mean, uh, Graydon. Very well then, Council. You have five minutes. Aw, he changed outfits too. Wow. My dear fellow, I apologize for my tardy arrival. Took you long enough, dang it! Mr. Holmes, are you alright now? <laughs> alright. I'm all wrong. Sorry? You've only really just managed to summon the strength to stand, man. I asked the judge for five minutes. But I fear even that may prove too much for me. Pray forgive me, should I pass out? Okay, then you should stop dancing and moving around. Seriously. Um, let's make this discussion as short as possible. 
Shirley, this place is full of idiots. None of them can see how wonderful your chemical blood analysis is. Oh, well, that concoction of mine was really just a bit of sport to assist me in my investigations. I never took the trouble to refine it for appraisal by the scientific community, an oversight on my part. Right. Modesty? Surely not. <laughs> but enough of that. I'm here to give you this, my dear fellow. What's that, a lunchbox? <laughs> yeah, that looks like... Why do I feel like this is Susato? Is this something... Because, you know, there's this lingering mystery about him and Susato meeting before she left, so... What's that? A lavender furushiki wrapping? A leaving present from Miss Susato. From Miss Susato? If possible, matters were to be settled without me giving you this. Those were her instructions when she asked me to do her this favor. I... I don't understand. Mr. Soto foresaw today's events, I believe. She knew that the culprit would attempt to escape justice by means both devious and underhand. And that you, Mr. Norohodo, fighting fairly as you are wont to do, would find yourself in considerable peril. At that very moment of crisis, you were to be given this small parcel. And those were the dear lady's instructions. A leaving present from Susato-san? Whatever could it be? Hmm. Oh! What is this? Oh! It's... It's the machine I made! Uh. Oh! Yeah! That was ages ago. Oh, little kitty. I completely forgot about that. Uh, what was it? The cat flap thing? I forgot the name. Meow! <laughs> so cute. Yeah, I was wondering, like, they showed that and then nothing else came of it for the longest time, so I forgot. Hmm. Okay, here's my thoughts immediately. Excuse me. The only part of uh, his last testimony that I was tempted to present on, like the thing that felt the most out of place is the whole thing about her supposedly throwing the gun out of the the peephole, right? Um, now I'm like that peephole itself is weird to me. So now I'm thinking does it have something to do with this machine? This cat flap thing? I don't know. That's all I could really think of. So... Is it that the... The peephole... Only goes one way or a certain way or... Hmm... I don't know. I have to see where this is going. Look! I use this! It's my latest invention! What, what is that? I call it the cat flapper mat. It can make a cat flap for a little furry friend like Waggy in seconds. Okay. What's Susie up to? Mrs. Soto muttered the following words before she left. I'm a failure. I don't deserve to be a judicial assistant. She did kind of mention something like that uh, when we had that talk before she left. And I don't really get it still. What? Didn't she say something like that? Yeah, okay. We're gonna flash back to it. Great. <laughs> you really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. But I'm sorry to say... That I've been a complete failure. Oh, Susato, I kind of miss you. Whatever did she mean by that, Mr. Holmes? 
that night when you left Winderbanks in pursuit of the thieves. Mr. Soto made use of this contraption for a certain purpose. Oh, 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 okay. Okay, that clears up everything. Wow. Last minute game changer here. Okay. So, he's clearly lying because if she used it after all of that happened, she created the peephole then using this. So clearly he's lying. He couldn't have looked through a peephole if it didn't even freaking exist. But seriously, how did he even find out about it? Like, after all that happened, he should have been gone? Did he just hear about it somewhere? Did we talk about it? I'm kind of confused. But yeah, okay, that makes sense. A little strange that she did that, but... I guess she wanted to see what was behind the door and it was locked, so she thought to use that. Hmm. That is your answer, dear fellow. No, not not at all cryptic then. Sato-san used this cat flato map that night? But why? Alright. Cool, 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 cool. Alright. We have hope at last. Your five minutes is over. Ugh, we're out of time already. Well, you okay, Sherlock? I'm grateful to you for affording us that brief recess, Mr. Reaper. Deep inside, <laughs> Ben Seeks is like blushing and he's like, he knows about me. <laughs> he's talking to me. Uh, I don't care if it's just my own head cannon. I think it would be really funny, okay? Dang nabbit. Even if it's not true. I kind of want to create my own fanfics about it. <laughs> I won't, but yeah, just thinking about it. I need no thanks, detective. After all, the die is cast. Is it really? The jurors are unanimous in their leanings. No doubt my learned friend will consider a submission examination. But then any attempt to alter the verdict now would be utterly futile. I wonder... Mr. Norahodu. Yes. The rest is down to you, dear fellow. What is your plan? The rest is down to me. Or instead of up to me? <laughs> it's an interesting saying, right? I leave it up to you. Um, we normally say up. But I, I guess you could also say down to you. Huh. It sounds strange to me for some reason, but I guess either way, the rest is left to you. So up or down doesn't really matter, I guess. <laughs> huh, I don't know. Sometimes the way English is, it's such a weird, complex language. I need to be careful here. If I make a wrong move, the trial will end badly. My lord, the defense requests. Oh, I wish we had time to think. No. Um. Yeah, we don't need to do a summation examination because, like I said, I'm very sure we can prove, uh, we can present now on his statement, the cross-examination. Yeah, let's do this. Hopefully he'll let us do it. Further cross-examination. Objection! The jurors have spoken. Protocol dictates that you may not cross-examine a new witness now. A new witness! Objection! The defense is not asking for the cross-examination of a new witness. Rather to continue with one of an existing witness. What? 
It would appear that a rather important detail has escaped your attention, Mr. Reaper. Okay, so when he showed up... Yes! Oh, Sherlock, did you know? Did you plan all of this already? He's so freaking smart! To interrupt the cross-examination. He left the door open. Oh, you genius man. Love it. That's something Sherlock would do. Ten steps ahead. <laughs> Love it. Okay, and then he said... Hereby temporarily suspended. Yes! Okay, no objection. Okay. So nobody can say anything then? If Runal asks to resume his cross-examination of Mr. Graydon... The court is obliged to allow it. This is absurd. My idol, how could you do this to me? <laughs> Grabs his heart. <laughs> You've broken my heart. <laughs> I would remind those present that this is my courtroom. I concur that the defense is entirely within its rights to request a continuation of the cross-examination. Thank you, Judge. However, I will not permit an unremitting protraction of these proceedings. Therefore, I have decided to afford the defense one final opportunity in concluding the cross-examination. Uh-oh. Is this going to be like one of those, like, you can't press, you can only present one piece of evidence. It's like, ah, shit. <laughs> oh, and if you fail, then you, you know, you lose the whole... The whole case or something. Instant game over. Gansu, you must shoot. Yep. <sighs> okay. Okay. I'll see how you are, game. Okay. Counsel, you must choose but one statement from the witness's testimony. And but one piece of evidence to present in support of your argument against it. A single chance to present evidence. If following that, the situation remains unchanged, I shall move to adjudication. Is that clear, counsels? You will not, you will not press the witness any further. My lord. Yes, my lord. Hmm. A single statement and a single piece of evidence. Most generous. Well then, Mr. Nodahodu, it's high time I fell in a dead faint. Uh <laughs> You're so dramatic, you just had to announce it. Okay. Well, make sure to land on top of uh <laughs> Gregson over there. I'll leave this in your capable hands. <laughs> does he have to flail around so dramatically as he does it? Of course he does. Sherlock, come on! Why are you like this? Miss... Mr. Holmes! Um, yeah, they're just ignoring him. <laughs> Like, uh, is nobody gonna call an ambulance or something for him? Well, they don't have ambulances, probably, but whatever. Bailiff, will you drag his corpse out of here? <laughs> oh, no. And so, we saw the end of Sherlock Holmes. Alright. To stand so... Oh, how do I say this word? Insociantly? I am learning a lot of new words during this game. Hold on. Time to look it up. In so... Insociantly? Uh, okay. Indifferent, showing a lack of concern. Insouciant. Insouciant. Insouciant? Ha. Huh. Insouciant. To stand so insouciantly before the court in a state of such high fever. 
either the man has extraordinary strength of mind or an extraordinary lack of feeling. I imagine he's feeling very little now. The detective is sleeping soundly in one of the antechambers. Oh, so you didn't take him to back to the hospital? You just left him there? To... <laughs> what if his wound, like, reopened or something? Strike a man when he's down, why don't you? Well then, Council, are you fully prepared? Okay, final battle. Here we go. Yes. One statement, one piece of evidence. I won't let Mr. Holmes down, or Iris. Okay. And I won't waste this final chance that Susato-san has given me. This is going to decide the entire outcome of the trial. Very well, then. Under the terms I have outlined, you may resume the cross-examination. Here we go. Okay. Which one do I do, then? Um, window bank through Nash. In the storeroom. You could see him through the peephole. That one is suspicious. Um, but I feel like it's the last one, right? When he talks about her throwing the gun. I mean, either way, he's talking about the peephole, but this to me bothers me more. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. God, I hope I'm right. Um, where is it? Cat Flepo Mat. Let's do it. Objection. Yeah. What on earth is that eccentric contraption, Council? Oh, it's my cut flutter map, my lord. It makes a way for cats to get in and out of a room. It can cut through any door you can think of and make a new little door in the middle of it. That's right, my lord. It's a device for creating so-called cat flaps. Small doors for cats to come and go as they please without their owners having to- Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, you're just gonna cut me off like that? Hey, he was selling a product. Uh, small doors for cats to come and go as they please without their owners having to open the main door. Okay. <laughs> Graydon's like, I can figure it out. <laughs> I'm sure we can all work that out for ourselves. Ah. But that cat lover's contra- Ah. Uh, I've seen this word. I just don't know. Is it- Like, I know the verb- The form of it that's like contrived. Is it contravance? Or is it contrivance? Oh, here we go again. Alright, Google. Do your duty. How do you pronounce this word? Contrivance. Okay. The use of skill to bring something about or create something. A device, especially in literary or artistic composition. Okay. Contrivance. Contrivance. Okay. Contrivance. This <laughs> this game is becoming Binks learns English words, even though Binks is actually pretty good at English, but <laughs> I guess there's words that Binks doesn't know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's fine. The dictionary is very big, okay? Contrivance. Okay. But that cut lover's contrivance has no possible relevance to this case. Oh, really? Of course it doesn't. To start with, there was no cat flap in the pawnbroker's door. Ah. Not being a keeper of cats myself, I'm afraid I fail to see what this has to do with the matter at hand. 
Perhaps it would help if I described its function another way, then. This contraption is able to create a peephole in any door you can imagine in practically no time at all. Yeah, get him! I beg your pardon. A peephole, you say? Two nights ago, we arrived at the scene only minutes after the murder of Mr. Windebank had taken place. Okay, my brain went there, you guys. The word peephole... <clears throat> of course it brings up to mind perversion. <laughs> because, like, if they were to sell that, first of all, all the perverts in the land would be buying it so that they can peep on their neighbors and on, like, I don't know, women's bathhouses or something like that, right? Like, wouldn't they do that? That's horrible. My brain just went there and I'm like, ah, why? <laughs> oh, boy. That's right. According to the paperwork at the yard, it was you, your Japanese assistant, and Holmes. Yes, the three of us were together, and it's recently come to my attention that my assistant made use of this device at the time. Your assistant did what? There was a peephole in the storeroom door. I can attest to that. Because I looked through the peephole myself in order to see inside the locked storeroom. This is ludicrous. What are you trying to say? You know what I'm saying. That's why you're nervous. Of course there was a peephole in the door. I said as much in my testimony. How else could I have witnessed the crime for pity's sake? Ah, and that's the crux of it, isn't it? Without that peephole, you wouldn't be able to witness this so-called crime. Yes, how could you? What? Don't so kindly say what you mean. Alright, it's time. Time to strike the final blow. What I mean is this, my lord. My assistant made the peephole in the storeroom door, and until such time as she did, the door had no hole in it to look through. What? No! Dramatic spin. <laughs> Spins to win. <laughs> this is a farce. Are you really suggesting that the peephole in the door was... Yes, it was created only after the incident had taken place by my judicial assistant using this device. Oh, um, hey, hey, hey. I'm thinking because what if they're like, oh, well, you could be lying and your judicial assistant could be lying and she's not here. So, you know, but they have pictures, don't they? Didn't um, Sherlock have the machines taking pictures all the time? I'm wondering if any of the pictures showed the door, right? Uh, I don't think we even have those in our court record, do we? Let me see. Hold on. Uh, I don't think so, because I think I was mad. Wait. Um. Okay. It kind of shows it. So maybe? Yeah? Because I think the peephole was big enough that it should have been visible in this image, right? Uh, that's 1 a.m.? What time is this? Post-shooting. Yes, yes! Okay, you can see it at 1.30. Oh, yes! I have proof! I'm so excited! Okay, we got this. We got this. Okay. Your assistant tampered with the crime scene whilst being fully aware of the gravity of her actions. That is a most serious act of vandalism. Uh, for which I humbly apologize, my lord. That's why she was upset. It was in, in the few minutes that I left the scene in order to pursue the Skulkin brothers and alert the police. Nevertheless, in the light of this new information, 
it becomes apparent that Mr. Graydon's testimony is riddled with holes. <laughs> Literally. Ah, gotcha. Riddled with. Explain yourself, Council. I don't understand the pun. <laughs> the majority of Mr. Graydon's testimony that appears to incriminate the defendant is based upon what he witnessed through the peephole in the storeroom door. Yes, that filthy girl shooting the man in back. Well, in the back, sorry. However, if at the time of the incident, that peephole did not yet exist in the door, there's no possible way that you could have seen what you claim to have seen. <sighs> in short, your entire testimony is a pack of lies. Ugh. Okay. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Okay. Yeah, they're gonna want proof. Order, order, order. Is is there any credence in this revelation? Objection. Here we go. None whatsoever. As my learned friend must surely realize. Exactly! This is just some cheap trick designed to discredit me. I'm afraid not, sir. Of course it is. Do you seriously expect people to believe that plaything can cut through a solid wooden door? Oh yes. I designed it to be very powerful. It can cut through even the toughest of doors. That's absurd. I don't believe it for a second. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that. Please, Iris, get permission before you, you know, do anything <laughs> to the courtroom. What? Waggy! Fooey! Time for dinner! so cute I forgot he was here oh but you lied to him you don't have dinner do you well oh <laughs> see <laughs> I knew you were gonna get in trouble for that Iris no young lady this is the old Bailey one does not make cut flops in the oak paneling at the old Bailey oh I'm not done yet. Don't worry. Uh, I ain't worried about you, but I'm worried about me, because I'm tired. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, we're so close, aren't we? I feel like we have a little more to go, though. So, maybe it's best if I leave this episode right here. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. And until next time, have a nice day. Bye!